All those devices that we consume every year, I mean, how much electronics are you really going through every year? It's about 18 kilos per person. For the, the products, the valuable parts that you're producing, what's the most valuable that you produce? Definitely, I mean, uh, e-waste is comprised primarily of not only just recyclable materials, but valuable materials. Um, I think if we look around our homes, we can understand just how much e-waste we really do have around. Um, typical statistic for the UAE is that we're each generating around 18 kilos of e-waste per person per year, which sounds like a lot. It's a lot of mobile phones, but e-waste is a lot more than just mobile phones, right? That's electronics. If we think of all the electrical things, the dumb devices, the on-off devices, air conditioners, hair dryers, blenders, toasters, Okay, all those devices that we consume every year, I mean, how much electronics are you really going through every year? It's about 18 kilos per person. So uh, the question is, is there value in it? Yes. Um, in our facility, which is producing, uh, we can process about 100 tons per day of e-waste. Um, I would say our, our number one output by volume is plastic. Okay. Uh, number one output by weight is iron, but number one output by value is copper. Okay, so anywhere where there's electricity involved, you're going to find copper. And anywhere where you're finding electronics, which is our smart devices, you have a circuit board, you're going to find your platinum, palladium, gold, silver. So yes, all e-waste has value, um, but we need to consider the, the, let's say, revenue negative components inside, which is the beryllium, the tantalum, the, the cadmium, capacitors, um, are, are, are harmful if we throw them away. Mercury, batteries, leaded glass, things like that. So overall, I'd say e-waste is revenue positive, which makes it a very desirable waste stream. But um, the challenge is, uh, is harvesting that value and putting it back into the circular economy in a way that's, uh, that's valuable to society, but also can be tracked for the purpose of reporting it back. But don't some countries make it the responsibility of the, of the manufacturer to take responsibility for their end of life of their products. Yeah, they, they do, and, it's, and I think we're familiar, some of us with it, called extended producer responsibility. And for anybody who's unfamiliar, that's the concept that if Samsung's bringing in a mobile phone, uh, let's say a million per year, they have to pay one dirham, let's say, per mobile phone. That's a million dirhams that gets put into a fund to then be drawn from for the um, eventual recycling of those mobile phones. You might recognize it from tires. Often you have to pay a, a recycling fee for your tires when you buy them at the onset. That's because there's not enough value in the tire itself to pay and fund for the recycling of it. So there's a, an escrow account that houses that. And EPR is becoming much, much more popular as a, as a real solution. It's, um, it's something that was usually taken from tax money Okay, but uh, if you don't drive and you're paying for tires to be recycled, then that's, that's not exactly efficient. So they would say, fine, anybody who buys tires, anybody who buys electronics, anybody who's contributing to the problem should eventually be responsible for um, contributing to that fund. And the concept of EPR is to say, then Samsung, Apple, whomever is you know, distributing those phones, ultimately you're gonna be the first ones to be paying that, and then you can recoup it when you sell your devices. So Samsung might pay on import, but then charge you during the retail sale. Do you think there's any logic in hijacking that idea and applying it to other products? And I'm specifically thinking at the moment at the two paper bags, two napkins, and one piece of plastic that I got this morning from Costa. Tell them they've got to contribute to an end of life fund for the fact they've given me a ridiculous amount of packaging for one coffee on one bun. Right. Do well, there's, <laughs> I don't know, you know, the problem is, I mean, you have to serve the coffee in something, you've got to give the food in something. Plastic has become a very, very cheap way to do that on the front end. Mm. On the back end, there's a real problem there. And I think that's what we've realized. And the, one of the commitments that I think we're all very happy with UAE in taking is that we're going to be banning the single use plastics. You know, we've already started with a fee on plastic bags. Uh, eventually, they'll be outlawed completely. And I, I've seen in the paper that it's going to be the same for such uh, you know, plastic utensils and So and I'm containers. going to ask this.